G'day and welcome to Mr. Code's Steam Podcast. One of the biggest names in 3D printing is Creality. Their Ender series of 3D printers are hugely popular for casual and professional users around the world. This week, we check in with our friends at JCAR to test out their latest 3D printers in the Creality range. The Creality Ender 3 has been around since 2018 and it is considered to be the baseline 3D printer because of its bare bones features and low price. But don't let that fool you, the Ender 3 is wildly popular because of one simple fact, it prints really, really well on the condition that it is calibrated and maintained well. Since the release of the Ender 3, Creality has released multiple variants of the printer to keep up with the latest technology and user expectations, which leads us to our first printer, the Ender 3 version 2 Neo. This is the Ender 3 that we all know and love, with a bunch of really cool new features. The printer now has a built-in CR Touch automatic leveling system. Now although it is automatic, getting it calibrated still needs some time to manually set up. All in all, it is a great feature that will ensure more consistent prints. Other new features like an LED light, upgraded extruder, magnetic build plate, and optional Wi-Fi connectivity make the Ender 3 V2 Neo the best Ender 3 so far, and it is also the most budget-friendly printer in today's video at only 399 Australian dollars. The next Creality printer is the Ender 3 S1 Plus. Although it shares the Ender 3 name, the printer is substantially larger with a build volume of 300 by 300 by 300 millimeters for printing much larger models. It is also so new that the Cura slicing software from Creality doesn't have a profile for the printer yet, but you can use the same print profile as the Ender 3 Max. The larger print volume means a heavier weight on the Z-axis gantry, so this printer has a second Z-axis screw to help move the print nozzle up and down. Down accurately. Other than the bigger print volume, it also comes with a user-friendly touchscreen. Having a touchscreen makes printing, tuning, and setting up much more intuitive and less prone to mistakes. This printer comes with a filament sensor to detect if the filament has run out, and a resume printing function so that you don't have to restart your print. On my test print, it seems like the printer's nozzle moves more slowly than the smaller printer on the default setting, but it could just be because the nozzle has a bigger distance to travel. You can always adjust the print speed in the middle of a print to speed it up or slow it down. Just like the Ender 3 V2 Neo, this printer can connect to the Wi-Fi for remote monitoring and printing with a separate attachment. The larger printer costs 799 Australian dollars, which is a considerable price jump from the trusty Ender 3 V2 Neo. But if you need to print larger models and costume parts, then you can't go wrong with the Ender 3 S1 Plus. Finally, we have the Ender 5 S1. This printer is the most expensive printer in today's video, costing 869 Australian dollars, despite having a smaller print volume. But what it lacks in size, it makes up for in quality. The Ender 5 S1 is what Creality markets as a desktop printer. This printer has a rigid external frame that helps isolate the printing environment and make the printer less bulky so that it is more suitable for an office. It has all the bells and whistles from the other 3D printers including a filament sensor, touch screens and auto leveling. And when you start printing with the Ender 5 S1, the first thing you will notice is the speed. The printer is noticeably faster than the Ender 3 printers and it doesn't sacrifice the print quality either. The external cube makes the printer feel substantially stronger and more rigid than the Ender 3 and you can feel more confident moving or relocating the Ender 5 S1 printer than the Ender 3 series. On top of that, the dual screws for the Z-axis and dual motors for the Y-axis rails means that the printer is substantially more precise than the other printers and requires less leveling between prints as a result. The Ender 5 S1 is a big performance leap from the other 3D printers in terms of speed and quality, but if you're on a budget, then you might want to consider the Ender 3 series printers instead. They are still great for most projects as long as you are not in a hurry. Big thanks to the sponsor of today's video, JCAR. When it comes to 3D printing, our school is always reaching out to the experts at JCAR. 
They are the leading DIY electronics retailer in Australia and New Zealand with over 130 stores. If you're in Australia or New Zealand and you want to buy 3D printing supplies like all of the equipment shown in today's video, then make sure you check out their range and visit the JCAR website or pop into a store near you. And that's it from me today. What do you think about the Creality printers that we looked at today? Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.